there, the, that mat. Sri Chaitanya Sarasvat Mat in Navadvip. 1972, three, and again, but after being successful in America, he returned and they had a grand reception to celebrate his establishing, you know, fulfilling Saraswati Thakur's order. <clears throat> they met him at the Navadeep train station with a kirtan. <clears throat> That's when two mats received, and one first, and then Srila Prabhupada went and stayed with Srila Gurmars at Sri Chaitanya Saraswat Mat. And one of the elder devotees asked to a comparison between these two mats. And Prabhupada said of the first one, oh, their emphasis is on quantity. He said, here the emphasis is on quality. <laughs> and he said, I want our society will have this quality in quantity. <laughs> hey, Krishna. Bande Ham Sri Guru Sri Jata Patakamalam Sri Guru and Vaishnavangscha Sri Rupam Sagrajatam Sagana Raganatang Bitang Tang Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam <coughs> Parijana Sahitam Sri Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Sri Vishakan Bitangscha Om Jnana Timrandasya Jnananjana Salakaya Chaksur un militam jena tasma isvi gurave namaha mukam karuti vachalam pango lang hayate girim yat kripa tamahang bande sri gurun dinatarinam guru gauragan darva govindang gringanai saha mande prasharato yesham sabarambha subankara gauravag bigraham bande gaurangam gauravaibhavam Gora Sankirtanomatam, Gora Karunya Sundaram, Guru Rupa Hrim Gauram, Radha Ruchi Ruchavitam, Nityam Nomi Navadipe Nama Kirtana Nartanai, Ananda Lila Maya Vigrahaya, Himavadi Vyachavi Sundaraya, Tasmai Mahaprema Rasapradaya, Chaitanya Chandraya Namo Namaste, Adadana Sriram Dantaya Idam Jache Puna Puna, Srimad Rupa Padam Boja, Dulisham Janma Janmani, Srimad Prabhu Padam Boja, Marupebio Namo Namaha. The Srimad Bhagavatam begins with this sloka. Sambandha Gyan, Sambandha Tava Sloka, <coughs> which Srila Gurudev, he said, it's like, see, dancing of elephants. Jan mad yasya yaton bayad itaratas cha arteshu abhigya swarat tene brahma hridaya adhikavaye muyanti atsuraya tejo vari madam yata vinimaya yatra trishago marsha Dhamna svena sadhana rasakua kam satyam param dimahi. So why you say dancing of elephants? Because that's something astonishing, but you kind of may feel you should keep your distance. Whereas you said, when Veda Vyas, the same Veda Vyas who composed us, when he is um, ex expressing Gopi Gita, Gurudev said, then like the dance of peacocks. Tavakatam ritam tapta jivanam kavibir iditam kalmasha apaham. Sravanam mangalam srimadatatam buri granantite. Buri granantite, buri dajana. So that first sloka, but it must be like that. Because this declaration is being given with regard to Krishna conception. Right? But whatever is expressed there, thematically, 
systematically, it must be, uh, I say, um, uh, expressed in in the Bhagavatam. We're in a in a sense we're being given hints or being given indications of what is to follow. So it's presenting Krishna conception in all of its fullness. And as we know from Srila Guru Maharaj, culminating in Radha Dasyam, the service of the Holy Lotus Feet of Sri Mati Radharani, Yadamiyam Mahima Sri Bhagavatam Katayam, Pratipatam Anubhutam Bhapya Labdavideya, Tadakila Rasamurti Shamalila Avalambam, Madura Rasadi Sri Radha Parapadmam Prabhadye. But how to go from that first verse that is alluding to these and second and third, third uh, particularly, and all of them. Uh, then we'll see if there are, what is expressed there, if it is echoed elsewhere. So we told Bhishwana saying, Jan Mad Yasa Yataha, this, uh, everything's coming from Adi Rasa. And as Mahaprabhu's discussion with Raghupati Upadhyay, it says, Jan Mad Yasa Yaton Vayat Itarita Cha Artishu Abhigya Svarat. See, clearly. And Krishna is supremely independent. Everything indirectly or directly is Him or taking us in His direction. But that Krishna, He is Swarat. He is completely um, independent. Right? And Tene Brahma Hrida, Hrida Adikave Muhyante Yatsuraya, even the gods. Muhyanti are bewildered in trying to properly estimate Krishna conception. Because what before Tene Brahma Hrida, because actually it's not uh, data transfer, intellectualism, gyan, but heart transaction. Srila Gurudev they say heart to heart transaction. Tene Brahma Hrida means that. And interestingly, that Krishna, who we're told is Swarat, says, Hang Bhakta Pradino Hyasvan Tantra Ivadvija, Sadhu Bir Bhakta Hridayo Bhakta Bhakta Janapriya. In the presence of devotion, it's as if he loses his independence. So we're told, um, Krishna is the supreme controller, Iswara Parama Krishna, but there's one thing he cannot control. Right. The supreme there's one thing the supreme controller cannot control, prem. And he becomes subservient to the premic heart of a devotee. And Rupa Goswami is telling that's the glorious position of devotion, that a drop of this divine substance, even in the heart of a finite soul, supreme controller, supreme positive Krishna, so the, so the so positive lose its power in the presence of negativity, meaning in that case, the supreme uh, negative position, Srimati Radharani, predominating moiety Krishna, predominated moiety Radharani. But Guru Maharaj put it in this way, like when you have a fruit, he said, you need to extract the juice. Right? Rasaraj is Krishna. Radharani is the extractor, extracting the juice from Krishna. He's saying Baladev is arranging everything in the environment, and Radharani, her, uh, um, how do you say, um, concern and aspect, Hladini, the ecstatic aspect. So, but we're told, and, and it's um, consoling to us that not just uh, tiny, finite souls uh, cannot uh, properly estimate or understand Krishna, but muhyanti yatsuraya, even the gods are bewildered and trying to understand the position of Krishna. Then we say, well, then I don't feel so bad. <laughs> We're in good company. Right? Right? 
and, and what is groomers? <laughs> Krishna likes to surround himself with ignorant people. <laughs> and we think, well, wait, no, I, I thought that, Chris, that Krishna, is, they're the highest section of liberated souls. What does he mean? Jnana shunya bhakti. Knowledge-free devotion. Devotion that's not polluted by gyan or the need to know. Right. So how to achieve that position? Mm -hmm. uh, when one verse Srila Prabhupada liked very much, he would go, what was it? Itam satam brahma sukhanu bhutya tasagatanam dharikeva mayasvitanam naradharikena sakam bijahru kritapunya punyam Itam Brahma Sukhanu, Itam Satam Brahma Sukhanu Bhutya, where it's being expressed in the Bhagavatam, these boys who play with Krishna, they go, what are they, Krita Punya Punya, means what level of Punya do they have that who is otherwise known as Yagya Bhuk, means he only eats the uh, offerings, Right, what are offered and Vedic ritual, and that, that is the way he, that, what did they do that they're picnicking on the banks of the Jumuna River with him and laughing and joking and playing around. And, and so Vishwanath Chakrabarti Tagore says, he says, don't think, he's always telling us what it says there, it doesn't mean that. <laughs> That's his specialty and in interpretation. Where it says punya, it, it cannot mean punya. And we know that to be true, uh, and this is all, you know, interpretive, because you know, Rupa Goswami says, John Makoti Sukritayar Nalabhyate, 10 million births, Sukritic births, doing the right thing, won't get you this. So he's saying, what does it really mean? Pleasing Krishna. It's not like they did something, some kind of vrat, vow, you know, the tapa, vrata, etc. And then on completion of that, you get to enter into Krishna Leela. Right? No, it's because Krishnanu Shilana. They do things they, that, uh, that Krishna likes. This Martyo Sadat Rasta Karma, there's this slogan near Nirvedi Tatma Bhagavan Chikirsi Toy. It's a big Bhagavatam sloka, Guru Dev said, What does it mean? Give Krishna what he wants. He said, That's what it means. It goes on and on and on. He said, What does it mean? You give Krishna what he wants. Krishnanu Shilana, again, told that the hallmark, the markers of pure devotion. Uh, doesn't mean doing what we like for Krishna. Right? That Krishna, like, we, we, there's something we like to do. Like Tirtha Maharaj said of his one child, his idea of the spiritual world was you're diving in a, a swimming pool of rasgolas. And sometimes you go like this, and one comes in your mouth, and you're going this way. And that. <laughs> he's saying, that's, you know, ocean of nectar <laughs> kind of thing. Not, I mean, there is ocean of nectar, but how did, so in other words, how did they achieve this position? It means what level of faith, shraddha, right? belief in, exclusive belief in Krishna, that that's everything. Sarvadharmam paritajamami kam sharanam, braja sharanam means this, I, focus everything exclusively upon him and by extension as devotees and everything is achieved. Yasmin prapte, praptam idam, bhavati. Then you get this one thing, you get everything. So in the Bhagavatam, in the 10th canto, which uh, that's where, from what was announced in the beginning, is going to find its fullest expression there, especially in Nigama Kalpatura, the, the fruit of the tree of Vedic literature with this nectarine substance, Madhura Rasa, is going to be uh, expressed there. But we're told that's in 
Pancha Jai 29 through 35, this section. So what's leading up to that? Still establishing Krishna. Nine cantos prerequisite to get to the birth of Krishna. In the tenth canto. Then uh, so many pastimes, and each pastime moving in this particular direction. So about those cowherd boys. Uh, before hearing the pastimes of Krishna and Braja Gopis, say cowherd boys from uh, Chris, uh, um, Kumar, Poganda, Kishore. Kumar with uh, Nanda Yashoda, Poganda with the uh, cowherd boys, then Kishore, Braja Kishore, Krishna, Radharani, and Braja Gopis. So then the Poganda, when Krishna is with his cowherd boyfriends, right? and uh, which Guru Maharaj Prabhupada, they just, they just say cowboys. They call them cowboys. Has nothing to do with the modern, that's why it was, and Prabhupada's brown Bhagavatams, early, it says cowboys. But then they thought that'll be misunderstood, so they put cowherd boys. Yeah. But that Krishna, and we were talking earlier, as that mothers, after they have a baby or child, that there's a period where they uh, uh, start to spend time without the child, which is sometimes described as separation anxiety. We always talk about Krishna Viraha, right? But here's their child. So how they, it's very difficult for them. They're mad with this love and affection for this child, toddler, etc. But then, the, then they have to go to work and then not be with the child, something like that. Or we're told when Krishna and Balaram and the cowherd boys, when they meet every day on the doorstep and, and they're going to go to the Vrindavan forest for cowherding, that Mother Yashoda cannot bear to be separated from Krishna. So, Vishwanath Chakrabarti Tagore says, repeatedly, they, it's like they finally get her to agree, she lets go, then Krishna goes, then they have to bring him back. And then everything's okay, and then they get him to go, and then they have to bring him back again. Over and over and over again, till finally, by the influence of Yoga Maya, somehow she can allow him to go to the forest under the care, guidance, protection of Balaram. <clears throat> One of Krishna's name, Ramanuja, means really the little brother of Rama, Balaram. So, and those cowherd boys, so what eagerness that they get up in the morning and run to the house of Krishna, waiting for Krishna to come out and play, and and he's there, Mother Yashoda is dressing him. They're watching. Delightfully, Rupa Goswami can describe how Krishna tightens his belt and how beautiful that is. So, Mother uh, once in Navadweep and the final times, Gurudev is singing some song. I'm saying, what is that about? Because he looks so happy. And he said, uh, Yasumati, she's doing arati to the lotus face of Krishna. That's the song he is singing and meditating on. Yeah, so Mother Yashoda doing arati to the lotus face of Krishna. And the uh, cowherd boys assembling there, and sometimes Krishna clonks them on the head with his flute, and they're laughing, considering themselves very fortunate. <laughs> and they go to the Vrindavan forest. We were talking about what? Bahulashtami. And, and Gopa, these times where Krishna gets elevated to full cowherd, but before this period, taking calves, taking care of calves, mainly, and with the boys, and they go in the forest and they have their lunches. That is inconceivable. I can just hear a guru Dave saying, "I'm thinking those lunches <laughs> must be very wonderful." You may be consider who they're cooked by. The inconceivable, and all these different cowherd boys, their mothers are exalted, gopis, super cooks, 
in Gokula, Goloka Vrindavan, and they go to the forest and, and they find a place to have a picnic. And we're told sometimes uh, some boy will say, I can't find my lunch. Someone will say, does it look like this? Yeah, and then they throw it to another one. He's running around, and then the boy's crying. Then Krishna, he, through his blurred tears, sees Krishna's before him with some sweet. So they, uh, and sometimes if Krishna goes to take care of particular cows, and, the boys, they're running after Krishna. They don't like to be separated him from a moment. It's mentioned that sometimes when they're walking, like a tree blocks their vision. Like the gopis, They cursing Brahma for making eyes that blink. An eyes, eye blinks worth of separation is intolerable to them. So these cowherd boys, if a tree becomes be, be, between them and Krishna, they're filled with anxiety. Right? But they're running after him, and I will be the first one to touch Krishna. No, I will turn him. Competing. So they find a place on the Jamuna Puline the banks of the Jamuna to have a picnic. And while they're there, some of the calves are wandering in the forest, causing the boys some anxiety. Krishna says, don't worry. You, everyone stay and enjoy here. I'll go get them and bring them back. Uh, and uh, well, I should say before that, because if we think of the concept of like never ending ecstasy, right? And Krishna Leela, Yoga Maya is providing uh, drama, dramatic tension. So before the, and every day, we're, when different pastimes are mentioned there, it said like, this is a typical morning in Vrindavan. Right, we think of it as something extraordinary. We're saying, this is just, we're telling you some past on a typical Vrindavan morning. And before that, I should have mentioned that when they're wandering in the forest of Vrindavan, they come upon a scene they, that to them looks like an amusement park. Because right? Vrindavan's full of so many pleasure scenes. And what they see. And the, the coward boys are discussing it. It appears to be a giant snake on the road. Right? We're told, like, miles long, right? with his mouth open. And some are saying, is this a Vrindavan amusement? And some else, no, I think it's actually a giant snake. <laughs> he says, because you can smell, like, bad breath from all the dead bodies. Ugh. And they're saying, and so they're sitting there analyzing and um, Bhaktivinoda Thakur and his songs, when he talks about Sharanagati, and he mentions the coward boys, whether or not they're going to drink the poisonous waters of the Jamuna, which are poisoned at this time, they think, eh, Krishna is here. What do we have to worry? So he's saying, they drink the poisonous waters of their Sharanagati. It's in the Sharanagati. So he's saying, their surrender is such that they can drink a poisonous substance without any fear, anxiety, because of this level of faith they have in Krishna. So in a similar way, these uh, uh, cowherd boys they, they start clapping and dancing because they have bugles, flutes, all kinds of things, you know. And they dance their way. The tongue is like a road. So he's got his mouth open like this. We're told, and this is Aghasura. He's the Bakasura, 
and Bucky means Putana, are his brother and sister, and they've already been killed by Krishna. So he's described as Bucky Bakanuja. We said Ramanuja, he's Bucky Bakanuja. <laughs> so Bucky means Putana, Baka, Bakasura. So to avenge the death of his brother and sister, he's come to devour Krishna. And all those cowherd boys, anything like there's these bridge bossy people, they're so much in love with Krishna and his uh, paraphernalia, they'll just all die as a consequence. And my master Kangsa will be pleased, and I can take their dead bodies and, you know, uh, as a type of pinda offering. That's what he's saying. He's got his mouth open and his tongue coming out looks like a road, a path, and the coward way. So they're dancing on his tongue, clapping, playing bu f flutes and bugles, having a little kirtan on their way in. <laughs> and Krishna we really didn't want them to do this, but his Leela Shakti and other energy, they're going to increase the dramatic tensity of these pastimes. And But Krishna think, himself, we're told, is thinking, how wonderful all of this is, <laughs> the way this works, his uh, different uh, pastime, Leela Shakti, etc. But then Krishna realizes that the real heart of the matter is the devotees want Krishna to rescue them. Vrajajana palana asura kula nashana. Same thing. Paritranaya sadhanam binashaya chaduskritam. They, uh, Gurudev said, if they don't get in trouble, then no rescue. So, they want Krishna to rescue them. Krishna enters Agasura and starts expanding his form so that the life air of Agasura is lifting his pran and energy up to the Brahma Rundra on his head and bursts out of his head. In other words, his soul bursts out of the top of his head. It's vibrating in the sky. Krishna comes out, brings all the cowherd boys back to life. Apparently, they were not in a life condition for a well, while. And, the, and they all see that this vibrating light in the sky merges into the body of Krishna. And gods, goddesses, the Gandharvas, the dancers, they're all singing and dancing and celebrating this pastime of Krishna. And their celebration is so loud and extensive, it goes all the way to Brahma Loka. And Lord Brahma, what, what, what's the fuss about? And he comes down and he sees these grown gods and goddesses. They're all ecstatically praising and worshiping this little cowherd boy. And he's thinking, what? It's like they've all gone mad. And this is very peculiar to him. Muhyanti Yatsuraya. Even the gods are bewildered and trying to properly estimate Krishna conception. Right? So, Brahma is, after that, then what I described, they're having the picnic. Krishna goes off to search for the lost calves so that the boys will stay behind. And uh, when he returns, he finds that Brahma has stolen all the cowherd boys and the calves. And Krishna likes to play in this way. So it's as if he's discovering this, that he's surprised. But it's also to uh, delude Brahma into thinking that Krishna is somewhat bewildered by this transaction, because that's Brahma's idea. So we have Muhyanti Atsuraya, we have uh, Indra Mohan and Govardhan Leela. 
here, Brahma Vimohan Lila. Brahma is saying he's going to bewilder Krishna, delude Krishna. He's going to show some superior level of mystic power in the presence of Krishna. Right? So he's taken all the cows and cowherd boys and hidden them in a cave on Brahma Loka. So Krishna, seeing the absence of the coward boys and calves, he immediately expands as all of them. And they continue the pastime. So he's identical to each cowherd boy, to each calf. And they return home, and their mothers are, who love them so much normally, have increased love and affection at the sight of their children, as do the uh, calves' mothers. Right? And so, because we may think, you know, how does Vatsalya Rasa work? Right? There, there are gopis and Vrindavan say, oh, if we could have the position of Yashoda. Right? There may be cows who express these sentiments. Remember, they're also liberated souls. So here we see Krishna, he's becoming the child of that gopi. So she can feed Krishna. She can do everything that Mother Yashoda does for Krishna. But Krishna has appeared in the form of her child. Right? And we're told these mothers, their breasts are overflowing with milk due to love and affection. And Krishna, as their child, he's drinking this milk like it's some inconceivably wonderful nectarine substance, which it is because it's infused with Krishna Prem. And we're told it has an intoxicating effect upon him. So they're happy, their desire to have Krishna as their child then fulfilled. The cows are also in a similar position. Their calves are coming. And it's mentioned, generally, everyone will love their offspring the most. But sort of one of the best kept secrets in Vrindavan is that everyone loves Krishna a little bit more. <laughs> than their own children. So these mothers are bewildered. They're saying, suddenly I'm loving my child like the way I used to only love Krishna. <laughs> because it is Krishna. And this goes on for a year. And it was, we know by spiritual, um, you know, um, calculations that it was on the Baladev's appearance day because he was not there for these past times. Mother Rohini kept him at home. Right? So even Yoga Maya can have, exert her influence on Baladev. So for one year, quote unquote, he doesn't know. So this is going on for a year. Every day they're going. But Krishna is all of the cowherd boys and all of the calves. <laughs> and it's significant why yet, because when Parikit Maharaj and Sukadeva Goswami, they're having this discussion, it's mentioned that the Aghasura pastime, no one talked about it for a year. So you're going, I, I, you know, he's, it's confusing. Please explain it to me. Why? They think, well, there's a very good reason why they didn't talk about it for a year. They weren't there. And Krishna's not going to say. Because <laughs> Krishna can keep secrets. <laughs> but not in the presence of his devotees. So... So why a year? Because Brahma Loka, the average lifespan of Brahma Loka, 15 trillion years. Brahma's lifespan, we're told, is 315 trillion years. So one moment of Brahma Loka time was one year on Earth time. So Brahma just took them and then he looks back. He wants to see a bewildered, confused, defeated. 
Krishna. And so when he looks back, he sees all the cows, the cow herd boy, everything, exactly as before. And he thinks, wait a minute, like, it looks, no, they're on Brahma. Now, he, this is the beginning of his bewilderment. Wait. No, they're sleeping on Brahma. What? And he starts looking at them more closely. And they start showing four arms and turning into Vishnu forms. <laughs> you think, like, this is really bewildering. <laughs> And then he sees, like, blades of grass are dancing and singing praise to these mm, extensions of Krishna. And he sees all the directions personified are worshiping Krishna. Everyone is praised, lost and mad with praise of Krishna. And this is completely bewildering Brahma to the point of where he realizes that he has uh, misjudged he's unable to properly conceive uh, Krishna and Krishna conception which leads him to fall at the feet of Krishna remember Krishna is like five six years old and Brahma, the creator of the universe, he's with his four heads, Chaturmukh Brahma, tears streaming down his eyes, his eyes are all blurry, he's trying to wipe them clean. And he's off giving dandavas to Krishna and offering prayers. Beginning with Nomi Jate, Abra, Bapuse, Taridambaraya, Gunja, Vatangsa, Paripichitala, Sanmukhaya. Banya Shraje Kavala Vetra Vishana Venu Lakshma Shriye Mridupade Pashupankajaya. Saying, Forgive me, but Abravapu, your form, Abravapu, means like a black cloud. Saying, So it's literally and metaphorically to me, saying, It's very difficult to see you. They say, literally, it's very difficult to see you, and metaphorically, it's very difficult to see you properly. Right? The deceptive simplicity of Krishna Leela, Aprakrita Leela, the human like pastimes, Krishna Jataka Kela, Saratam Nar Leela, Nar Vaputahara Swarup, Gopavesh Venukar, Navakishor Natabar, Nar Leela Hoyana Rup. He's saying, I have some experience with Narayan and the ma majesty, uh, the opulence of Vaikuntha, Aiswarja. Yeah. But you're not showing that. He's saying, Abra, Bapu, say, Tari Dambaraya. So it's very difficult to see you properly, to estimate you properly. But Tari Dambaraya, Tarit, Tarit means lightning, umbar, your, but your lightning yellow dress, that provides the contrast by which you can be seen. So this is Srila Guru Maharaj's explanation, saying that means Hladini Shakti, the lightning yellow dress means Radharani, your potency reveals you. And another place Guru Maharaj said, faith is the halo of Radharani. <clears throat> And in his Gayatri explanation, Bargo by Brishaban Ujatma Bivavai Karadana Sri Puram. And Guru is going to, you know, Tunga Mani Mandiri. Her heart is a lighthouse of Krishna Prem, illuminating Krishna and Krishna conception. Just in the Nomi Dite Abra Vapuse Taridambaraya. This is the first line of the prayer of Brahma. Then we can think like, was this whole pastime or part of it arranged so we could hear Brahma's prayers? Which Vishwanath Chakrabarti Thakur and others saying formed the whole basis of all Gaudiya Siddhanta. It's all there. Favorite to our Guru Varga. So many slokas from there. Gunjava Tangsa Paripichtala Sanmuha. And 
Are you like um, the, the ma majesty of Vaikuntha, so many jewels? In no. Saying, uh, <clears throat> Gunja, you're wearing the Gunja, uh, uh, Gunja mala berries. The, those that seen, we saw on the way to Badrinath, the bushes with the, their little red berries, right? Krishna likes them. They represent Radharani also in the Govardhan Shila or some. Gunjavata Paripichala. Some and what do you have in crown? No. You have a turban and a peacock feather. So forgive me, I, I would expect that divinity would have some jeweled crown and, and, and extreme affluence, and you're wearing these. Uh, ga, the gunja mala and the, you have a peacock feather. <laughs> then banyasraje kalava vetra And in your left hand, you're eating that chira and doi. <laughs> and with the chira and doi and the fruit and, and like. Yeah. And everyone knows in Vedic culture, you don't eat with your left hand. <laughs> The left hand, and what? He's got the food in the left hand, and sitting there eating and laughing with everybody. This is serious stuff. <laughs> What's all the laughter? And your yagya book, yagyeshwar, that's normally how you eat them. You know, we know the wives of the Brahmins, the Brahm wouldn't feed Krishna and Balaram because it wasn't the right time yet. They hadn't finished all the mantras, the sacrifice was not complete. But the wives of the Brahmin came immediately. And so here, who's Yagya Bhuk, sitting on the banks of the Jamuna, having a picnic with his friends. They're laughing and joking, stealing one another's lunches, sharing food, putting food into each other's mouths. But he takes up their remnants sometimes, who's Yagya Bhuk. <clears throat> oh, and your. Uh, and what is he wearing? F flowers from the Vrindavan forest. So, Vishwanath Chakrabarti Tagore says, why? To show that the common flowers of Vrindavan are superior to the Parijata of heaven. Right? And the peacock feather, that is superior to the, the gems of, of Vaikuntha. A Prakrita Leela. Banya Sridhe Kavala Vetra Vishana Hino Lakshma Shri Mridupate Pashupankujaya. And his feet are very soft to the touch of the earth. Elsewhere we hear it. When Krishna and the cowherd boys enter the Vrindavan forest, Swapada Ramanam Pravishad. Kita Kirti, Vrindaranyam Swapada Ramanam Pravishad Gita Kirti. At the touch of the lotus feet of Krishna, the earth sometimes shivering in conjugal ecstasy. And here, and we know he is Adbhutakram, he of wonderful stride, as was demonstrated in Vaman avatar. Right? Disguised as a dwarf, two steps he's. Anything. traversed and conquered the whole universe. Here, and saying, no, but with Krishna, he said, so that's the Vaman avatar. And what is Krishna? No. He said, just short, measured steps. Sometimes Krishna's walking is compared to that of a baby elephant. I know, yeah. he just walks along. <laughs> So Brahma is saying, forgive me for not understanding who you are. Uh, back to me, but why? Gyane prayasa murapasana mante eva jivanti san mukharitam bhavadiya bhartam stane stita shruti katam tanuvan manobir ye prayasa jita jito piyati tais trelokyam. One should stop trying to measure you by intellect, yeah, trying to uh, understand you through knowledge. Give it up. Right? And do what? Uh, 
Stane stita. Shrutika means whatever your position is, wherever you're located. Satmukarita. Hear from a uh, devotee of Krishna. Right? That's how we'll get proper uh, Krishna conception. Right? By hearing from a Krishna loving person. Right? Remember, Muhyanti Atsuraya, bewildering. Why? When trying to measure the infinite with one's intellect. Uh, what is the proper way? Tene Brahma Rida, heart to heart transaction. So, what was announced in the first sloka now coming uh, to fruition here in the prayers of Brahma. And uh, Brahma saying to Krishna, he's saying, oh, is that Narayana Stvam Nahi Sarvadehinam? And are you, I'm Atmabhu, I'm born from the lotus of Garvadakshaya, so are you not my father, Narayan? And he's saying, I am five years old. <laughs> and you're the, the Lord of the universe and creative universe. How can I be your father? <laughs> so Krishna keeps playing with Brahma to get him to say more and more of these things. He's saying, well... Then he's establishing that Narayan, you're at the center of everything. It's not that you come from Narayan. Narayan comes from you, who can play as a five-year-old boy like this. And Guru Maharaj reminds us that he said Saraswati Thakur, one of his topics would be um, the sonhood of Godhead, not the creator. See here, Brahma... Krishna playing with Brahma. Brahma is the creator. Krishna's bewildering the creator. Brahma, who sprung from the uh, lotus navel of Garbhadakshaya Vishnu. So, these are extreme positions. Creator, controller. But what is the central conception of the infinite? Human-like dimensions. So, Saraswati Thakur would say it this way. The sonhood of Godhead. Right? Meaning, because uh, those other conceptions are there, but they're not uh, intimate, remote. Sonhood of Godhead means he's at the center. Pashu Pongajaya, Biswanath Chakrabarti Tiger says that, that he's being addressed as being the son of a cowherd means that is superior. Nanda and Yashoda are superior to Vasudeva and Devaki. And so, as the son, then he's, um, you know, carrying the shoes of Nanda Maharaj on his head for his father. He's being chastised by Mother Yashoda. Right? When uh, Ma uh, Mahaprabhu asked Raghupati Upadhyay, the, you know, what's... Uh, Extract the essence from the scriptures. Uh, and when you say Shrutim, Shrutim itare, Shmitim itare, Bharatamanye, uh, Bhajantu Bhava Bhita, Ahangi Ha Nandam Bande Yashalande Param Brahma. Saying you have the Shruti, the Shmriti, the Purana, the Mahabharata, all these great literatures, they're trying to bring one in connection with the Parabrahma. He said, but Ahangi Hanandam Bande, Yashalande Param Brahma. But that Param Brahma that you all seek, and why are you seeking him? To, as a solution to impending mortality. Right? That's what it means, bhava bita, afraid of impending, you know, uh, th that we will die. So madly searching the scriptures for some solution to this inevitable problem. I want to come in connection with the Param Brahma. He said, but I see the Param Brahma is crawling in the courtyard of Nanda Maharaj. So what I say, what did he do? Forget all this other stuff. Let's just concentrate on what he's doing. 
That's what he's saying. So this is Mahaprabhu and Raghupati Yupadai. In one sloka, he's taken us from generic spiritual conception and considerations into Vatsalya Rasa. And one leap. Ahangi Nanda Vande Yashalandev. The Param Brahma is crawling in his courtyard. Then what do we hear? The, uh, uh, and the Bhagavatam, um, um, Nandakim Akarod Brahman, because Prakit Maharaj hearing all the similar things from Sukadev, Nandakim Akarod Brahman, there's a word, Shreya Eva Mahodayam Yashodava Mahabhaga Papo Yashastanam Hari. Who, so if Nanda Maharaj is a can we imagine anyone more fortunate than he? Yashoda. Mahabhaga. Yashoda va Mahabhaga. She's even more. Why? Because he crawls in the courtyard of Nandamaraj and then onto the lap of Ma Yashoda and is sucking her breast milk. So she's in a superior position to even Nanda Maharaj. She's got that firm Brahman on her lap, sucking her breast milk, like the ladies in this Brahma Vimohan Leela, those gopis. So, <clears throat> oh, and so, but why did I say that? Because of, um, Brahma, uh, praising, oh, Chris, Krishna playing with that he's a child and Brahma uh, saying that he's uh, gra uh, greater than Narayan. That's what I'm saying, when Gaudiya Siddhanta is coming out here. So, uh, anyway, so, and, and what is required? To get them, he says, Atapite deva padambuja dvaya prasada leshanogrihita evahi. So it's not a question of intellectualism. When Guru Maharaj told one of his teachers, who, had, who was expert in the Sat Darshans of India, and, and Guru Maharaj is thinking very, um, how do you say, um, Naively, like, oh, why don't you use your great intellect to study the pastimes of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? And that teacher said, oh, my boy, it is not a question of learning. You have to get some grace. Prashadale Shanugrihite, that's Brahma's conclusion. That only by your mercy, by Prashadale, a little bit of mercy from, then it's possible. And I can understand this is all. This whole past is an arrangement of your mercy. So, uh, and what else is there? Tatenu kam pam susamikshamano. So many great slokas are there, but toward the end, um, there's one. So after Brahma's offered all these wonderful prayers, and about his own attempt to show mystic power, he said, like, a firefly in bright sunlight, it's meaningless, snow, d snow in darkness. He's saying, so I'm such a fool to try and your presence show my prowess. And so he says, Janantu eva janantu kim bahukchan no me prabhu. Others may say they know everything about it. As far as I'm concerned, I have nothing to say on the subject. He says that after saying 30, 40 wonderful prayers. <laughs> But he means to say, I don't have the audacity to say that I have fully realized you. So um, it reminds me of when Srila Prabhupada came to New York in perhaps 1973. And somehow, he talking about getting a little bit of mercy, I was allowed to serve him for a very brief period of time. You could say 15 minutes. <laughs> but during that, he's asking me different questions. Uh, was my save at the temple? And, uh, and I said, when I said, well, uh, besides what I was doing um, with uh, shipping his books, 
He said, you know, um, we have a program where we go and preach to Indians, on the, another devotee and I. And that was interesting to him. He wanted to know more about it. And I said, but Prabhupada, I said, you know, sometimes when we're preaching to them, they'll stop us and say, I know what is Krishna, you know. And when I said that, Prabhupada laughed. He's taken for some of the time and he said, <laughs> he said, that is their disease. <laughs> That is their disease to think, I know what is Krishna. So Brahma says, Janantu eva janantu kim bahukya name prabhu. I don't have much to say on this subject. Others may say, I don't. And then lastly, um, his prayer and is very interesting because it's almost a direct parallel of the prayer of Uddhava that will come later in the Bhagavatam. Asamaho charaneno jishama hangsam brahma sa tad buri bhagyam iha janma kim apyatavyam yad gokulepi karamangri rajobhishekam. He's saying, so, once I was talking with Gurudev, like I said, after all these prayers, because we're reading something similar in Gargar Sanita, I said, Kaviraj Goswami or, uh, and Bishwanath, they'll have Krishna and Brahma, like a dialogue, but it's always mystical. But, and Gargar something is not really saying anything. And I said, so what did Brahma's kind of asking Krishna for some blessings and forgiveness and, and saying, what did Krishna respond? Gurunev said, Krishna just looked at him and went, you know what, you can go now. <laughs> and Brahma's like, all right, I'll go uh, back to Brahma Loka and I'll be good. <laughs> <You know? laughs> he realizes like, it's too high for me here. I'm not qualified to be here. Right? We have newly recruited devotees voyeuristic, voyeuristically envisioning themselves as super servitors. We have Brahma, the creator of the universe, feels he's not qualified to be a blade of grass in Vrindavan. And he should just go back to his service on Brahma Loka, managing the universe. That managing the universe and his planet is something is, is doesn't qualify you to be a blade of grass in Goloka Vrindavan. That's Tadburi Bhagam Ihajanma. What good fortune Ihajanma came up to be born in Vrindavan. Yad go kulepi karamangri rajobi shekha. But if I could, then the servitors moving here in this plane, some of the dust from their lotus feet would come on upon my head, thereby consecrating my existence. That's how he thinks. That's how Uddhava thinks. That's how all the great devotees think. Tasya namosu brishabhana bubu di shepi. One of Prabodhananda Saraswati Thakur saying that in consideration of the greatness of Srimati Radharani, he's saying the direction in which she appeared is worshipable to me. Always the the greatest magnitude of appreciation for the least aspect reveals uh, true devotion. So back to the game. So, muhyanti yatsuraya, the bewildered devatas, tene brahma It's a heart-to-heart -heart transaction, right? And what? Uh, Swarat, Krishna's independence, ahang bhakta aparadi no hyasvantantra ivadvija. But that Krishna, that supreme controller, cannot control Prem. He's under the control of Prem. Sri Krishna Karshini Chasa. So in the presence of devotion, see, it's as, as, as if I lose my independence. So, uh, so what to speak of in the presence of the supreme devotee? Uh, so, Srila Guru Maharaj mentions that um, this is the, the, the shorthand way in Ramananda Sambad to uh, say, um, highlight 
the, the position of Srimati Radharani. It's mentioned that in the Rasalila, that that means all the different groups of the gopis, sometimes told to be hundreds of thousands, millions, billions, right? that there's some um, like, uh, I could say probably like transcendental competition. Vishaka singing, Lalita singing. They're expert singers, dancers, we know from uh, their position in Gauralila as well. And you know, we said, Radharani, seeing that she's been taken as like one of the group, <laughs> that Gandharvika, Gandharva, she shows superior singing, canceling everybody, and then she leaves in a huff at the equal treatment. Right? And Krishna, Radhamadaya Hridei Tatyaja Braja Sundari, for the absence of one, you could say one trillion minus one, normally we would think of as a trillion. But in this instance, one trillion minus one, he leaves the trillion and goes searching for the one. That's how we're being told very cautiously, carefully about her super qualifications. This is the way, indirectly. And Krishna is searching for her and finds her and all the other gopis, they're saying like, oh, how fortunate, they're following the lotus footsteps and the soil of Vrindavan. Uh, which we're told, by the way, is that no one ever steps on them or brushes them away or anything. And when they find Krishna, lotus footsteps in Vrindavan, Radha, Padmam, Kitadam, Vrindavan, Jaranam, what to speak of the lotus footprints of Srimati Radharani. So they're saying, oh, she's so, for, that's, she's the one. That's why her name is not mentioned, they're just saying, the one who pleased Krishna the most, who offered herself fully to Krishna and pleased Krishna the most. He's gone with her, Aradita. And then they see there's not four footprints anymore. Now there's only two Krishna's lotus. And they say, oh, from all the singing and dancing, she was so tired. And she told Krishna, if we were to go any further, you have to carry me. That's why now there's only Krishna's lotus feet and carrying her, and then set her in the place, and she closed her eyes and thought, is there anyone any more fortunate than I? And opens her eyes, and Krishna has vanished. And one of Saraswati Thakur's disciples, I don't even want to say it in front of his picture, <laughs> asked him about this, and he became very upset, because he cannot tolerate any uh, this, you know, even seeming remote disrespect uh, towards Srimati Radharani. So when this devotee innocently, foolishly said, like, how do we understand that? That, you know, Krishna, then he vanishes. It's, you know, perplexing, it's bewildering. And Saraswati Tagore said, there is no devotion to be found there. Why have you introduced us? We're students of devotion. You're introducing something where devotion is not getting the upper hand. We just said Krishna is controlled by praying. And now you're giving an example where apparently that, that's being called into question. So he was a little uh, annoyed. And so, so they just dropped it. Right? He's Sri Barsabhanavi Devi Daitaya Das, like in Govardhan, the Daita Das Seva Kun. So, but Guru Maharaj, he, he knows that Radharani will always be in the supreme position, and there has to be some way to adjust us. And we heard Krishna say, Ahang Bhakta Paradi no in the presence, it's as if I lose my independence, um, my power. 
Yeah. So, Guru Maharaj finds in Bhaktivinoda Thakur that Krishna, he's so astonished in observing the behavior of Srimati Radharani and her Maha Bhav Sarupini Radha Thakurani that like in Charitamrita, when Rupa Goswami, Aparam Kasyapi Prani Janamridasya Kutuki, Ritva Maram Upabhoktam Kamapiya, Rucham Swama, that it awakened in him the curiosity to experience her position. And particularly, he thought, it's in the dead of night and the depths of the Vrindavan forest. And if I absent myself from her, what will be her response? So, Guru, De Guru Maharaj has found in Bhaktivinoda Thakur that Krishna's hiding in a kunja. He did, so he only apparently vanished, but actually he wants to observe her. And that's where he sees the uh, height, the depth of the stages of separation. And he's utterly astonished, and that awakens in him the curiosity to experience her position. And so he appears, descends as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Hare Krishna. <clears throat> so we went from there to the right place. <laughs> by the grace of Srila Guru Maharaj. And just to conclude, so he's saying, Vishwanath, Aradya Bhagavan Brajesha Tuniya Tadama Vrindavanam Ramya Kachid Brajavadu Bhargena Cha Kalpitai Srimad Bhagavatam Pramana Mamalam Prema Pumarta Maham This is Panchama Purusharta, the fifth goal of life. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Matamidam Tatrapi Napara so there's no superior method of worship than that which was invented by the Brajagopis worshiping the son of Pashupankajaya, worshiping the son of Nanda Maharaj, right, Krishna, in Vrindavan, Brajasharanam, by what? Atma Samarpanam, offering themselves total self oblivion, not self extinction. Self-oblivion means forgetfulness. Self-forgetfulness to the point of just wholly given over to the other with no consideration for themselves. It's mentioned in the Ratyatra. Before, when Mahavira was down, these are some part of the discussion. Saying, the gopis have no self-consideration. Everything they do is for the pleasure of Krishna. But not self-extinction, self-annihilation. Self-oblivion means just so, so forgetful of oneself because of being so fully aware and having offered oneself to the other, to Krishna. So that method, Brajabhadu Bhargana Jag Kalpitai, and he said, and where is, I mean, these are outrageous statements. Hey, Bhaktivinoda Tagore says, uh, Krishna is the property of Radharani. All the Vedas, he said, all the Vedas declare that Krishna is the property of Radharani and her girlfriends. These are outrageous statements, but they're provable. They're true. So, and, and so where, where you're saying this, there's nothing higher than the method of worship of the Braja Gopis and Vrindavan of Krishna? What's the evidence for that? Srimad Bhagavatam Pramana Mamalam, the, the Amala Purana, that has no ulterior motive. Kaitava Dharma has been kicked out. The, uh, uh, religion, cheating religion, religion with an ulterior motive has been thrown out of the pages of the Bhagavatam. The gopis have no ulterior motive. Their only motive is to satisfy Krishna. So it's the Amala Purana, Pur Pramana Mamalam, Srimad Bhagavatam. That's the evidence. And what does it say there? That Prema Pumarto Mahan, that Krishna Prem, that's the ultimate goal of life. Not Dharma Artha Kama Moksha, Krishna Prem, Panchama Purusharta. That's the fifth, the highest, ultimate goal of life. Prem, love and affection. It's love and affection that can bring Sri Krishna Karshini Chasa. Krishna, the supreme controller, under control. Right. 
So then just to conclude, then Gurmar said, and where did you learn this? <laughs> These things you just said. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Matamidam Tatrapi Napra. From Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Krishna himself said when he told the gopis, your love and devotion is so great. Normally, I, it's, a, it's reciprocal. But in your case, I can't reciprocate you. Even if I give myself to you wholly, entirely, it's not equal to what you're giving to me. Right? So, the Guru said, let virtue be its own reward. But the Gopi is like, virtue be its own reward? No, we want you. <laughs> but anyway, so he's saying, I can't repay. You may, I promised, and now you're making me break my promise. I promised in Bhagavad Gita, now I'm breaking my promise. So what to do? Gurmar said, then he appears as Mahaprabhu and said, this I can do. I will roam the face of the earth in the mood of my beloved and tell everyone how great she is and how great you are. That I can do and that I want to do. That'll be good for me and it'll be good for the world. Jari Gorna Hoita, Tabiki Hoite, Kemari Dari Tam Dehe, Radhar Mahima Prima Rasa Sima Jagata Janata Ke. Hare Krishna. Hari Hari Namo Krishna Yadavaya Namo Nityananda Shri Adaita Chandra Dharadhara Shri Vasari Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Jai Rupa Sanatana Bhatta Raguna Shri Jiva Gopala Bhatta Dasa Raguna
Haribo. Shri Radha Govinda Sundar Ju Ki Jai, Shri Giri Raj Govardhan Ki Jai, Shri Rupa Nuga Guru Varga Ki Jai, Nama Charja Srila Haridas Thakur Ki Jai, Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Adaita Gadad Harshi Basiri Gau Bhakti Vrinda Ki Jai, Shri Shri Radha Krishna Gobha Govinda, Shama Kunda Radha Kunda Giri Govardhan Ki Jai, Vrindavan Dham Ki Jai, Navadip Dham Ki Jai, Shri Chaitanya Saraswat Mat Ki Jai, Shri Gupta Govardhan Ki Jai, Ganga Devi, Jumuna Devi, Bhakti Devi, Tosi Devi Ki Jai, Om Vishnu Pad Vishva Varanya, Sri Lesi Bhakti Vedanta Shami Prabhupada Ki Jai, Shri Chaitanya Saraswat Mat Acharya Brinda Ki Jai, Jai Shri Bhakti Bhimala Vadut Maharaj Ki Jai, Sanyasi Brinda Ki Jai, Shri Bhakti Lalita Devi Dasi Ki Jai, Shri Maheshri Didi Ki Jai, Seva Brinda Ki Jai, Samaveda Bhakti Brinda Ki Jai, Nithai go premanande. Maharaj Dandavats from Shripad Vigrahan Yasi Maharaj. From Shrichesa Mat West London. Ishanunga Devidasi from UK. Kuladri Prabhu, Jagannatha Chaitanya Prabhu, Purushottam Prabhu, Kumkum Didi, Kalyani Didi, and Daivati Didi from USA. And Madhavi Didi and Atul Krishna Prabhu from Hungary. Govind Ram Din from Mauritius. Rasananda Prabhu and Bhakti Lata Didi and Balaram Prabhu from Russia. Lila Sundar Prabhu, Suleka Didi and Lakshmi Priya Didi. Arjun Prabhu from Ukraine, Sundar Gopal Prabhu and Seva Rupa Didi from Mexico, Tulsi Didi from uh, from here, <laughs> from Chiang Mai, um, <laughs> Yadu Gopal Prabhu from Ecuador, Ashapurna Didi, uh, Bhakta Ban Bandhu Prabhu, Marion Rodriguez, and Purushottam Prabhu uh, says, Never heard such a complete and ex exciting Siddhanta on Krishna's reason for becoming Gauranga Mahaprabhu. Srila Gosami Mahaprabhu. Srila Gosami Maharaja Ki Jai. Hare Krishna. <laughs> <laughs> hey. What I give is a dim reflection of Guru Maharaj where they were from. But even a dim reflection may have some value. Hare Krishna. Vila Govinda Varanda. Jai. That's where Srila Bhakti Vrindavan Madhusudan Maharaj is. And there's Jai Bhakti Sevan Hrishikesh Maharaj. Is he in Abhazya with the devotees there? Yeah. Oh, no. He's with Ajita. They're in Kiselni, maybe. Yes. I think <laughs> I can see the walls. <laughs> Damayanti Didi in Tomsk. Bhagavan Das, Dhanavad, Sandeep Krishna Prabhu in Greater Hastinapur. Right. <laughs> Chaitanya Nitai Prabhu in Vrindavan, Rupa Vilas Prabhu in Philippines, Dhanavad, Jeevan Aditi in Krasnodar in Russia, Dhanavad, Vrinda Devidasi in Nizhni Novgorod in Russia, Dhanavad, Chandra Kanti and Little Sudevi. Hare Krishna, Sudevi, Dhanavad. Hare Krishna. <laughs> She's very excited. Hare Krishna. Abhiram Prabhu, Dandavat. Lakshmi Priya, Lila Sundar, Suleika, Dandavat. In Ukraine. And there's a Jita in Kaselni and one of his other forms. He can expand into eight different forms. Raten Krishna Prabhu, Dandavat. There's Janavi. Iri Dandavat, Janavi. Hey Krishna. Praneshri, 
Didi, she's doing Espanol translation, much appreciated. Maravillata in Odessa, Ukraine, Dondovat. Anjali, you're also in Ukraine, right? <laughs> hey, Krishna. Dondovat. Pritu Prabhu, looking thin. He needs more. Someone bring Pritu Prasadam. <laughs> There's Ram Sundar, Parmananda Prabhu, and Krishna Priyadidi at Govinda Farm, Dandavat. Sulakshana is here, Prafula Krishna Prabhu, Dandavat, Kalindi Priya of Ukraine, but she's in Thailand. Indu Muki is in China with Mitra Vinda, Dananjaya Prabhu, Dandavat Shamala in Belarus, Sulakan Kiev, Krishna Mohini Didi, Dandavat. Is that a, oh, Priyanana. Oh, no, she's in Lakta, I think, right? Hare Krishna. Um, Srila Bhakti Ashraya. Jai, Srila Bhakti Ashraya, Dandi Maharaj. Hare Krishna. And Pavel Brun, Moscow. So Who from Moscow? Pavel Brun. Oh, Pavel Brun from Moscow. Where, where did so he go? Third row, third row. Yes. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Nandavat, Hare Krishna. Tapananandini Didi. Yes. In Mexico, maybe. Hare Krishna. Nandavat. Vrinda Didi, Nizhny Novgorod. We mentioned her. Vrinda in Nizhny Novgorod. Yes. Achyutananda Yaroslavli. Achyutananda Prabhu, Dandavat. Ananta Shesh Prabhu in Spain, Dandavat. Rasananda in Sochi, Dandavat. Anyone else? That's it. All right, bunch of kalpa tribhyas cha, kripas in the beva cha, narayani, nadia devi dance, patitanam pavanevyo, vaishnavevyo namo namaha, sankarshan das. Oh, he's here. Infinity media team, no, no, pavan, hare krishna. All right. Jan Shubhachil Bhakti Sathir Gasai Maharaj Ki Jai.